Welcome to my messy garage. So today we're going to be building a mantle for downstairs. We're going to go with a live edge mantle, which pretty much looks like the side of a tree without the bark. Um, but we decided to save a little bit of money and I'm going to make my own. They can cost anywhere from 250 all the way up to seven, 800 bucks. So we're going to save a little bit of money. Uh, the one I'm building is going to cost about $40. And I'm going to beat it up a little bit, make it look a little rustic. So. Um, anyway, so I was going to show you guys how I did that. The one I'm making is going to be made out of 1x12 and 1x8 boards. I'm just using pine boards because we're going to be able to stain that and, and get it in color that we want. Um, and I'll show you the whole process as I'm doing that. Alright, so we have our boards laid out here. First we're going to go ahead and uh, mark 64 inches because that's how long my board's going to be. Uh, it's good to cut all of them at one time so that way you know they're all going to be the exact same length. So we'll go ahead and get that done first. Next we got to build our end caps so we are going to make it exactly the same length as one of the 1x12s and as the 1x8 so it's going to be 11 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter. Okay so we got all of our boards cut. Here's our main body, our uh, top and bottom and then our front and then our two end pieces here. Next we're going to go ahead and miter everything at a 45 degree angle because we're going to be connecting all these on 45s instead of stacking them like that so it'll look like one piece of wood when we're done. got all of our cuts made. Um, now we're going to start distressing the wood a little bit and giving it some character. Uh, here's just a couple things that I'll be using. Um, I mean you can use anything. Uh, chains I've seen people use. Just, just random objects to beat the wood with. Um, this is actually a pretty cool idea. I've seen people hit this with a hammer and, and kind of drag it and it will give it kind of a, a rotted look almost. Yeah, I'm also going to try to use this as well to try to beat some little holes and, and scrape it a little bit too, so we'll see how this works. When you get done going ahead and uh, putting all your marks on it, run over it real quick with some 220 sandpaper on a sander just to kind of knock off the edges. So after we have distressed everything and given it the look that we want, given it a quick sand, we're now going to go ahead and put on our French cleat system. So to make this French cleat system, all I did was take a 2x4 and rip it at a 45 degree angle down the length of it. So this 2x will be up against the wall like this and it'll have the 45 degree angle sloping down towards the wall. And then when we go to put our shelf up or our mantle, this will be on the back side. It will sit on that 45 degree angle and then pull it close towards that wall. You'll get a better idea once it's up on the wall and you can see it, but uh, that's, that's the French cleat system. And be sure to use glue because glue really does a great job bonding this wood together. that all screwed in at the top here. 
And we don't have to worry about covering these up because when I lay stone, the stone's actually about an inch and a half to two inches deep. And that's actually why I went with a two or a one by 12 so I could have more of a mantle up top because I am going to be losing almost two inches of space up there. So next we're going to attach the front of the mantle onto the top. And the easiest way I found to do this was attach some strips of tape to the top. And when we lay it down, have the opposing side of the front on the tape as well, and then you can fold it upwards and it'll kind of hold it in place for you. will hold it in place for us. We're gonna go ahead and throw a bunch of glue in our joint here and uh, go ahead and then tack it up. So we tacked the front in, so now we're gonna come in on the top and do a few more tacks up here with our 18 gauge nailer and try to close that gap a little bit. But we'll be sanding that down and it's gonna close it off doing that as well. All right, so now we're gonna put our end pieces on. With our 45 degree angles, they should fit in just like that. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we are gonna sand these and round them off a little bit but that is fitting in there pretty nice. So I'll glue it up and uh, throw some nails in it. All right, so now we're gonna round off the edges with our uh, sander. I'm just gonna use 220 grit paper just to give it uh, a little bit of a rounded look, round off our corners, and I think we should be done then. All right, so after a little bit of sanding, this is what we have here. Got our edges all rounded off, our corners rounded a little bit. You can come back with a little bit of wood filler and just those minute little cracks there. I got a decent sized one here. Probably use a little wood filler on that. And you can just throw that wood filler in there, come back over with quick sand, and it's gonna look like one solid piece of wood instead of a top piece, bottom piece, front plate and sides. For the last few uh, dents and distressing points, I'm taking a screwdriver and with the edges on here, just hitting the corners and giving it a few little dents in there. All right, so now you can see there's just a couple little imperfections along our corner here. And they don't all look the same because it either hit right on the corner or hit the flat part. So a little bit of a variation between everything. All right, so here's the other piece of our cleat. We are going to put it up against the wall in this orientation and you'll want to center it and have a level to make sure this is level and we're going to be driving some four inch screws in there so it has enough room to go through the two by through the half inch of cement board and well into the studs in the wall. All right so now we can hang the mantle up on the cleat. There we go. Sits all the way flush up against the wall because that cleat system is right on the inside here. And with this cleat system, you can actually move it side to side a little bit until you uh, get it in the desired position or the center position. And with our level up there, you can see it is almost exactly level. All right, so we let our wood filler dry and we went ahead and sanded it. So next step is to go ahead and stain it. I'm gonna use this Espresso from uh, Minwax, but we'll go ahead and put our stain on this evening and then tomorrow we will start doing some poly.
right, so here it is after staining it. You can see the uh, distress marks really pop out after you throw some stain on there. All right, so we let that stain dry for about 24 hours, but I went ahead and got some polyurethane clear satin, and we're gonna go over our mantle here with it for one coat, probably give it a light sand after, uh, I don't know, eight hours or so, and then do one more coat over the top to finish it up. So the next step that we're going to do is sand the first coat of poly before we apply the second one. Um, you're not really looking to go through the poly, you're just kind of smoothing out uh, that first coat that was on there. I'm going to be using 220 on an orbital sander and then a little 220 by hand on the corner so I don't go through the stain. let this dry for about 8 to 12 hours and it will be finished ready to hang on the wall. All right so we let the poly dry on here for a day or two. Let's go ahead and put it on the wall and see how it looks. All right, so there it is on the wall. It's very easy to put on there with that French fleet system. Uh, before we throw rock on the fireplace here, I'm actually going to take some four inch screws and screw it into the wood studs back there at an angle, which those will all be covered up with the, uh, with the rock as well. Well, I hope you guys liked the how-to video on building the mantle. Uh, I think it turned out awesome, and it was a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a live edge mantle like we were doing. Uh, this only cost me about $40 after it's all said and done for the wood and for the stain. So, very nice, cheap option. It gives you a really good look. Um, soon, we're going to be throwing some rock on the fireplace as well as building out the heart area, throwing stone on that. So, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and check back soon for more updates.